tonight with the goal of making one Southeast Kansas City neighborhood safer. It comes a week after a block party turned violent. Oxford's Lexi French joins us live from downtown Kansas City tonight. Lexi, Mayor Quentin Luke is also posting this weekend about some of the action city leaders are taking to reduce violence in Kansas City. Is that right? That's Smash. right. And Mayor Lucas said he and other city leaders met with KCPD this week to discuss a number of issues, including street racing and a string of break ins that impacted local businesses from Brookside to the crossroads. Another topic of discussion was violence prevention efforts in a southeast Kansas City neighborhood where community members are pushing for change after a food truck operator was killed in a shooting. It's just getting too crowded. A thousand people lined up on both sides of the street, you know. Some people have said that they've seen open guns, you know, and people, you, you know, you just can't have that. Things are going to happen. On Sunday evening, community leaders, KCPD officers, and violence prevention groups met near Prospect and 70th Street to canvas the neighborhood where a 31-year-old food truck operator was shot and killed in the early morning hours of August 5th when a large street party turned violent. We wanted to come out and kind of canvas the crowd, uh, you know, listen to people, uh, tell them what we expect. You know, you come in the neighborhood, uh, respect the space and be respectful. That's the main thing. You know, everybody wants to come out and have a good time. But, you know, yeah, good luck with that. And guns have no place out here. On Wednesday afternoon, community members and business owners from the Tri-Blenheim neighborhood met with KCPD officers at the Metro Patrol Division to discuss concerns and push for change following last weekend's block party that turned deadly. You know, our message tonight is that we're, we're tired of the violence um, and that we're not going to tolerate it. That's a result of a meeting we had last Wednesday, you know. And uh, again, I think this guy's got it. For the neighborhood. <laughs> I think he's got it. You know, I think put down the guns clearly does not work. I think it's time we've all moved on to be respectful. That's going to work. Yeah, man, be respectful, man, of the space. Maybe they need to put the guns up instead of down. Mm. Flip the script. I got you. Well, putting it down hasn't worked yet. Put the guns away. There you go. You gotta be direct with it. Might be too abstract for him, though. <laughs> place the guns in the drawer, or place the guns under your bed. Unload That's the cool. firearm. Yeah. Carry the cool. carry the clip in your other pocket. Yeah. Yeah, man. Give um, you that moment to think about what you're doing. Yeah, and give you that moment for the when so when the ops come pull up and start shooting at you from across the street. <laughs> you know, you have to, you know, put the clip in the gun. Put yourself at a disadvantage, <laughs> Black State. How about just stay in the house? Well, I mean, what if you're not on house arrest? And even if you are on house arrest, <laughs> don't really matter. Hard to keep them in the house. Yeah, it's, it's hard to keep them when I was in the house arrest. And you know, a little protection is also it's also good. In that message from Mayor Lucas about break-ins uh, and street racing and also violence prevention, he did say that city leaders will continue to work with KCPD to ensure justice for victims and the Kansas City community. In Kansas City, I'm Lexi French, Fox 4, working for you. Violent crime rates in Portland declined during the first half of this year, and that appears to be in line with what's happening nationwide. Fox 12's Joe Vathiapil is live in studio yeah. with these new numbers, Joe, that seem to suggest an encouraging trend. Yeah, Bonnie, so this comes from numbers released by the major city chiefs association. Right in time for the election, man. <laughs> a shock. Yeah, man. A lot of crime is down, you know, all over the place. Except it's down 3.5% in the last five minutes. <laughs> Kansas City is the, is, is the outlier. Though. However, Association, which represents right. police executives in the biggest cities in both the U.S. and Canada. And it looks at four different types of crimes in the first six months of this year and then compares them. In the biggest cities in the USA plus Canada. So they, this is a, this is a, this, these statistics are a, are a mashup, a conglomeration of the U.S. and Canada. You got to peep, they threw that shit in there so slick. Yeah, crime rates are declining in Saskatchewan. 
So I think what we've learned is uh, mass immigration leads to lower crime. Yeah. As police executives in the biggest cities in both the U.S. and Canada. And it looks at four different types of crimes in the first six months of this year and then compares them to the first. He was supposed to be like, in biggest cities in the U.S. and Canada. He, 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 he pronounced Canada too. Like, he, he, he slipped. He lingered slipped on it. By Vec, whatever the fuck your name is. Um, U.S. and Canada. Executives in the biggest cities in both the U.S. and Canada. And it looks at four different types of crimes in the first six months of this year and then compares them to the first six months of last year. And nationwide, it shows drops in homicides, robberies, rapes, and aggravated assaults. And here in Portland, some numbers in particular are even better than what's happening nationwide. So let's take a look at this. So in the first six months of even the year, better. Portland has seen homicides drop 17% compared to the first six months of last year. And that is right in line with the nationwide numbers. Again, a 17% drop. But when it comes to robberies, Portland is down 23% year over year, which is much better than the national average of a 6% drop. Uh, rapes in Portland have- Yeah. Why would rape. anyone rob, why would you rob anyone when you could just walk into a store and take whatever you want? Robberies down, how about that? Yeah. Who's robbing people? Well, uh- <laughs> If I had to guess, yeah. <laughs> I think we all know the answer. Now. It may be down twenty three percent, but I, I'm pretty sure I know who's doing it. There's there's, the there's a growth industry in shoplifting that has taken a lot of the heat away from the robbery statistics. Yeah, but it, you can't really fill the fun factor there. You know, yeah, just you walk in and take it. The thrill. You don't you don't get to shoot anybody in most shoplifting events. And also, True. like cash and like. You gotta you gotta hawk the items after you shoplift. Robberies are just you know you get the cash in your hand. You know you cash cash wins, man. <laughs> but they say cash is king. Yeah, have declined, but only slightly, and not as much as they have nationally. And aggravated assaults have declined by similar rates both here in Portland and Look at the nationally as well. Look at the rape number. Of course, uh, crime down. is a major. The rape is only down one percent. What is that? Even Nationally, mean? it's down nine percent. But what's going on up in Portland? Where what it's is, only down 1%? I really want to know what one percent less rapes commits yeah. to, like equals to. <laughs> is, is that like three and a half rapes or something? Yeah, like wow. Three point six nine rapes. That's crazy, man. You are having a rape problem there, man? You gotta get the and rape down, man. When they say nationwide. They're also talking about Canada as well. And I'm telling you, the more right. populated cities in Canada averaged against our more populated cities, they really bring the crime numbers down. Exactly. Because there's a lot less crime going on in those cities that are being averaged yeah. into our numbers here. There's a lot less other things than yeah. those cities too. <laughs> yeah. But apparently there's 8% more rape. Those migrants might be bad, but they ain't no American son, man. No. Uh, issue in this upcoming presidential election. President Biden released a statement crediting the American Rescue Plan, which provided fifteen uh, excuse me, fifteen billion dollars for public safety and violence prevention programs nationwide. He also billion. pointed to gun legislation that passed in 2022 as being responsible for the declines. Uh, the Trump campaign has made crime a major talking point of this election. So far, we have not seen a statement from that campaign regarding these numbers. <laughs> Yeah, crime is down. Voila, man. Just in time for the election. Trump says that crime's a major issue, but rape is down 1% in Portland. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, Trump. Oh, man. I think if we can import more uh, migrant workers, we can bring that rape number down to 0.5% less rape. Mm. <laughs> Which were released late last week. And we also took a closer look at the numbers for other major cities on the West Coast. And just like Portland, in the Bay Area, both San Francisco and Oakland have seen drops in all four violent crime categories. Los Angeles saw their numbers of robberies actually go up, but the other three categories did go down. In Seattle, though, homicides are down 10%, but the numbers of rapes, assaults, and robberies actually all increased in the first six months of this year. Kim and Bonnie, back to you. And only on Local 10, a break in the case after a deadly shooting at Gulfstream. A suspect